The purpose of this video is to cover uniform circular motion, specifically centripetal acceleration and tangential acceleration. So um, the first thing we want to discuss is can an object accelerate if it's moving const in a constant speed? And the answer is yes. And this applies to circular motion. So uh, it sounds odd at first because you forget that a change in direction of the motion of an object uh, even if the object's moving at, at the same speed or a constant speed this still counts as acceleration so acceleration is going to be a change in velocity in either its magnitude which would be its speed or in its direction or both so in uniform circular motion the direction of the velocity changes constantly so there's always an associated acceleration even though the speed might be constant now you would experience this type of acceleration when you turn a corner in your car now if you notice you're holding the steering wheel steady and during the turn and the move at a constant speed you're in a uniform circular motion and so what you're going to notice is a sideways acceleration because you and the car are changing directions. So the sharper the curve and the greater your speed, the more you're going to notice this type of acceleration. So we're going to be examining the direction and the magnitude of acceleration as we move through this video. This figure shows an object moving in a circular path at a constant speed. The direction of the instantaneous velocity is shown at two points along the path. The acceleration we can see right here is in the direction of the change in velocity, which points directly towards that center of rotation. Uh, the direction is shown with a vector diagram, and we call the acceleration of the object moving in this uniform circular motion centripetal acceleration, and that means moving towards the center or seeking the center. Now the direction of the vo velocity of the object at the two different points is shown. And so what we want to do is see the change in velocity would be the difference between these two points. And we indicate change of velocity as triangle V. And because the acceleration uh, is towards the center, we also have to take into account the change in time. And so what we're going to see is right here, we're going to have a very small change in our angle. And because this change in the angle is small, the arc length, which we indicate the triangle S, is equal to the chord length or the change in the R. So here we have the diagram a little bit cleaner and we can see the radius and we can see our angle theta and we can see our arc length and so that we know that our angle is proportional to our arc length divided by our radius and that arc length will be in meters. Now that also because that arc length is related to our change in velocity, we could submit change of velocity and then we could put our velocity here. Once we go through canceling out all of our units, ultimately what we end up getting is that our acceleration, uh, our centripetal acceleration can equal our change in velocity divided by our time or our uh, v squared divided by r. So let's look at a few examples and see how we can apply this to a problem. Here we have a centripetal acceleration problem. We're actually asked to solve for two components. We're asked to calculate the centripetal force and the centripetal acceleration of a three kilogram mass tied to a rope and the rope is swung in a circle of radius 0.75 meters. The velocity is four meters per second. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate our force. Now our centripetal force is going to equal our mass times our velocity squared divided by our radius. And so here we're going to have our 3 times our 4 squared uh, divided by 0 0.75. We're going to get an answer of 64 newtons. Now our second part we're asked to solve for is the centripetal acceleration. And the centripetal acceleration is our velocity squared divided by our radius. So here we're going to take our 4 squared divided by our radius of 0.75 meters. We're going to do the math and we're going to get a centripetal acceleration of 21.33 meters per second squared. On this top problem, we have a car of mass 1,000 kilograms moving in a circle, circular path of radius 50 meters. 
Uh, the constant speed of the car is given as 12 meters per second. We're asked to determine the centripetal force of the car. Remember that the force is going to equal our mass times our velocity squared divided by radius. We're going to plug in our numbers. And so we have a mass of 1,000 kilograms. We have a velocity of 12. We're going to square that. Divide that by the radius of 50. We're going to do the math and we get 2880 newtons. And we'll finish drawing that out. Now we have a second problem down here where we have a car is moving with a constant velocity and uh, it is moving in a circular path. And uh, the radius of the circular path is 48.2 meters. And the centripetal acceleration is 8.05 meters per second squared. What is the tangential speed of the car? If we begin, we have our acceleration equals our velocity squared divided by radius. We're given the centripetal acceleration is 8.05 meters per second. Our velocity squared is our unknown. We are given a radius of 48.2. So we work our equation around. We get our velocity squared equals 8.05 times 48.2. So that our velocity would equal the square root of 8.05 meters per second squared times 48.2 meters. Solve for that, and so we get a velocity of 19.7 meters per second as our answer. When dealing with centripetal acceleration, sometimes we're asked to calculate the period. And the period is uh, the time required for one complete revolution around that circular path. And so, so uh, the period can be defined as... 2 pi radius divided by velocity. In rotational motion, tangential acceleration is a measure of how quick a tangential velocity changes, so that the motion of an object would be under the influence of both the tangent and the centripetal acceleration. So note the changing acceleration as we move through here, and note that it is uh, always acting perpendicular to the um, centripetal acceleration of that rotating object. And so the tangential acceleration is equal to the angular acceleration times the radius of the rotation. So here we have an example problem. We have the blade of a windshield wiper moving through an angle of 90 degrees in point uh, Two eight seconds. The tip of the blade moves on the arc of a circle that has a radius of 0.76 meters. What is the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration of the tip of the blade? So our formula for uh, centripetal acceleration is right here, where we have centripetal acceleration equals the velocity squared divided by the radius. Now the problem does not give us the velocity, so we need to calculate the velocity right here. Now in order to do that, we go back to our formula from our previous slide over the period equals 2 pi radius divided by uh, velocity. We're going to rework this around so that we end up with our velocity will equal 2 pi radius divided by our period. So velocity would equal 2 pi the radius is 0.76, and we got that from our problem. Then we have our period as 0.28, and we'll see the 0.28 times 4. Now let's stop there for just a second. You're going to notice that it goes um, 90 degrees in 0.28 seconds. A complete circular path is 360 degrees, so we had to take the 360 degrees, divide it by 90. That's where we got the 4. So it went 0 0.28 um, seconds for 90 degrees, so uh, 0.28 times 4, because we had 4 90 degrees. We work this out, and we get a velocity of 4.26 meters per second. We can now take this and plug this into this formula here. 
4.26 squared divided by our radius, and so we would have a centripetal acceleration of 23.92 meters per second squared. Here we have a problem that is going to combine both centripetal acceleration and um, coefficient of static friction in order to solve the problem. So the example asks, what is the minimum coefficient of static friction necessary to allow a penny to rotate along a 33 and a third RPM record diameter 0 0.300 meters when the penny is placed at the outer edge of the record? Now let's first go over uh, a few calculations to get our velocity. We know that our record is 33.3 and it does 33.3 revolutions per minute. We're going to convert this over to revolutions per second. One minute has 60 seconds and so we get 0.555 revolutions per second. So that in one second uh, we would divide that by 0.555 revolutions, and so we would have 1.8 seconds per revolution for our time period. Our formula for our velocity is 2 pi radius over our time. 2 pi, you'll notice our problem does not give us the radius, but it does give us the diameter as 0 0.300. Therefore, our radius would be 0.15. We just calculated our uh, time here, or our time period, which would be 1.8. And so we get the velocity as uh, 0 0.524 meters per second. We have to come back and notice that our force of friction equals our centripetal force. The formula for force of friction equals our coefficient of friction times our normal force. The formula for centripetal acceleration is mass times velocity squared divided by radius. The formula for normal force is mass times acceleration. In this case, the acceleration is due to gravity. So I've plugged in mg in place of normal force. So we get coefficient of friction times mass times gravity equals mass times velocity squared uh, divided by radius. Therefore, we can cancel out our mass. So we would get our coefficient of friction times gravity would equal velocity squared over radius. We can move our gravity over by multi multiplying each side by 1 over gravity. So we get our coefficient of friction equals our velocity squared divided by radius times gravity. And so we're asked to come up with that coefficient of friction. So our velocity squared is our 0.524, and we just calculated that. We're going to square that. We had our um, radius, pull of gravity is 9.8. So the minimum coefficient of friction would be 0.187.